All right. First of all, I need to apologize. I'm getting over a cold, so my voice is a little bit off. But um, I've been working with Buddy Simon here. He's trying to print this light box and having these squares show up. And I've seen these show up in a number of different designs and other uh, other people complaining about it. And I, I really wanted to figure out where on earth is this coming from? And if we go in and like zoom in on it, uh, we're we're seeing these little squares show up in the corners. And I'm, I'm looking at saying this is only showing up specifically on corners. Where is this coming from? What is this? And I, I spoke with him some. He gave me permission to go ahead and use his examples and such. He sent me some of the files he was working with. I, I went through and looked at the um, actually supremely clean uh, vector graphics he put together and the box he put together. There's a handful of things that I disagree with on how this was put together, but that was due to the um, video he was following. Uh, I, it's just a personal preference thing. Like, for example, these extrusions are 0.7 millimeters thick. Uh, I don't know where that number comes from because no amount of division comes up with an even 0.7 millimeters, no matter how you really slice it. Oh, wow, that's a fun pun. Um... I went through and cleaned this up, just uh, making a couple of minor adjustments to it, like uh, combining this outer lip right here, merging that in with this guy just to reduce the number of artifacts in it. Um, all sorts of stuff like that, but that's that's not what I did. Not initially. Initially, I left this exactly the way it was, and I went to the video he was working with and followed the steps exactly as they're described, replicating what Simon had done. And what I did, I took that process over here exporting just a single uh, monocolor STL and painting it using the built-in uh, painting tool that comes with studio here and that's what I've done uh, if I pull up the painting tool everything on this was painted on the top and the bottom because it doesn't penetrate all the way through that weird number of layers because uh, again if I go back and let me get out of painting real quick I want to get out of painting. The video he was watching has some really weird... Use 0.28 for the first layer and 0.22 for each layer after that. Which, ultimately, if you come in and slice this, it results in a face that is... Let's see here. Three layers thick at 0.72 millimeters. So that's a number. Um, don't, I, okay, whatever. Um, but there are those little dots right there on the second layer. And I was trying to figure out where on earth are these coming from? What could possibly be generating those? And it has to do with painting. It's entirely painting. Because if I come over here and look at another one, I took that exact same Fusion file. I didn't modify anything to it. I just simply exported it as a 3MF instead. And by exporting it as a 3MF, I then get my objects. And I colored the... I colored the way I do everything else just by selecting filament off the objects. And when I look at the preview on this one, there's no squares. So as I pan through the layers here, or scroll through the layers here, first layer, second layer, third layer, there's no more face after that. There's no squares. But if I go back over to the one that was painted using the painting tool, first layer looks good, second layer has squares, third layer doesn't. And here's what I'm coming up with. Here's what I'm thinking. If I come back and go to prepare, I think what's happening when the painting tool hits some of these corners for whatever reason, either due to the nature of the, the geometry where you have walls touching walls because, uh, I don't know, the way the painting edge detection works perhaps when edge detection is turned on you're using this to fill and fill these letters in like if i ever make this one gold for example and then i'd have to go to the underside and select it there as well is there a teeny tiny little piece of this somewhere that it's not selecting i i can't move the mouse to it because it'll put that outline on it i don't see anything there right now I flip over to the other side zoom way in move the mouse out of the way i can't see anything there and I don't know if I'm going to get the same little square on here because I'm using a new material or not. Let's see. Yep, there's that little square right there. So the only thing I can think of is that it can't, for whatever reason, figure out that corner. 
there's something about that corner it doesn't like. And I, I don't know. So is it the base material? What if I change the base material to white on this one? And now I have to go through and paint in the black portions. So let's go back to painting in black and choose you, you, you. Okay, because now we're doing faces, right? Let's choose all of our faces, paint all of those black. Okay, so now at least on the outside surface that looks the same and the base material is white. What happens in that corner? Am I going to get a white blob now? Let's see. Look at that white blob. So yeah, that's that's what it's doing. It can't, for one reason or another, understand that in this little corner on the second layer or in between the painted surfaces, there's something that it can't color correctly. So it's just defaulting to putting down a blob of the base material, and it has, I guess, a minimum volume it has to extrude, or because the way it has to try and put down walls around it, two wall counts perhaps, maybe that's what it is, just a point with, I think it's two walls that I have? Two or three walls? Three walls? So yeah, it's just trying to draw something around it? Uh, I don't know, but I can tell you this, it's the painting tool. It's trying to do this with the painting tool. Painting tool is awesome on large 3D things. If you're if you're printing a hot air balloon and you want to color in the, the different ribs of it, it is a fantastic tool. When you're working with something flat and you're trying to work with light transparency going through it, that is not what it's made for. It's made for surfaces. And it's doing its job properly. If I look at this at the first layer, my surface is perfect. If I look at the third layer, the other surface that I painted, it is perfect. If I come down to the second layer, the what is technically infill, it's not perfect. And that's okay. That's that's fine as far as the painting tool is concerned because it's met its goal. The surfaces look right. This is why I'm so adamant that you should be painting by object and not with the paintbrush, with the painting tool. When you paint by object, you have complete control over what material is used where. So like in this case, if I tell it I want this V, which I don't know which letter it is because I didn't make this one. If I want to make this V gold, I can do that. And I'm not going to have those little squares show up because it's going to process and say, okay, this, um, this object, this body will be made out of this material. And that is that. It's not trying to figure out the borders between it or apply a, a mask on top of a mesh to figure out where those things are. It just will do it. Absolutely. You should be, or set of, yeah, it's V. You should be painting by object. And part of what I advise on this when you are creating your designs, um, where can I change my version on this real quick? If I go to the updated version I made on this one, instead of the original version, one of the things I did, just as a, a little cleanup operation. Oh, cool. Did it crash? Yeah, I, I don't want to send a report. Just go away. Did I kill it? I think I killed Fusion. Awesome. Maybe you're not supposed to open a version for something you already have open. <laughs> we'll try that again. I guess I should be dancing a jig right now to fill this dead air. Thank you, Fusion. Come on. So if I come in here and look at my most recent version, let's try that again. One of the things I do when I create these, when I make my bodies, it would be better if I used components. I don't. I, it's a bad habit. I use groups, but I name these things. I give them names that tell me what color they should be. Letters white. Cut out green. So when I come in here to actually put this thing together, and is that going to open? Probably not. It's open up anyone. Uh, when I go to put this together, it's super, super easy for me. I just look at it. What color do I see? That's the material I choose out of my list. Um, and I, I didn't re-extrude this. All I did was make a couple of adjustments on the extrusion depth from the uh, timeline down here, and I renamed a few things. Which, the renaming is super easy. If I wanted to, I can select all these things and 
right click or just click again and say whatever and it'll rename that whole group or i can hit f2 and do the same thing and it'll rename them so you could go through and name each one of these letters if you wanted if that's relevant to the design in this case it isn't but anyways if i come in here and oh right i had moved it that's why i can't find it uh studio face Yeah, it wouldn't open because I had cleaned up my desktop after I had been playing with these files. So now with the newer export where I'd labeled these things, it was super easy. I just came in here and I saw white and I scrolled down until I stopped seeing white. And I changed filament to white. That's all I had to do. Left the lip as black, found the green one, scrolled down, changed filament green. And that was it. That, that's exactly how long it took to color this once I imported it. So yeah, I strongly encourage the use of 3MF for your decorative faces. Uh, I still like step files for higher accuracy things. Uh, I, I encourage the use of step files, but unfortunately when you split a step file into its component parts, it does not retain these names. So you would be left to go through and individually pick them out. And uh, depending on the nature of what you're printing, if you need that super, super high accuracy, which depending on how you're exporting these, if you're exporting out of Fusion, and in this case, I'm going to turn off my base, I'm going to tell it to save as mesh. If you do a high accuracy 3MF, it's fine. It's virtually the same as the conversion that Studio will turn um, a step file into, because Studio cannot directly interpret a step file. It does convert it into a mesh, but that mesh is going to be basically the same as a high accuracy 3mf so up to you whichever you'd like to use i still like the step files i use those for my bases because there's like three components and it's easy enough to pick out but for one like this where you have a couple of dozen easier to use the 3mf hope that helps y'all